Hey guys, welcome to the latest mini lecture on muscle. What we're seeing here is what actually happens when myosin grabs onto actin. Last time we met, we talked about how the action potential in the muscle cell prompted the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release calcium, which eventually caused the movement of tropomyosin, exposing the actin to the myosin. And if I look at this picture here, I am going to see in the number one, so starting with number one here, I see myosin is grabbed onto actin. And notice that myosin has an ADP, that's adenosine diphosphate, and a phosphate group attached. That means myosin has got already broken down ATP, and myosin is in a high energy state. So once the myosin grabs on, it is then going to release the phosphate. And when it releases the phosphate, it starts to move. It starts to pull on that actin. And remember, the actins get pulled inward toward the H zone. So that sarcomeres get shorter. And the myosin then releases the ADP, and it's done with this, this movement, this pulling, which is, for, which is known as the power stroke. Now, in order for contraction to keep going, myosin's got to let go and do this all over again. To let go, myosin needs to grab onto a new ATP. So when myosin grabs onto a new ATP, it lets go. Then it's going to break down that ATP, and that puts it in this high energy state again. And as long as the actin is still exposed, myosin can grab on, and we can repeat this process over and over, and the sarcomere gets shorter and shorter and shorter. Okay, that is pretty much it for the mechanism of muscle contraction. Now, once we've contracted, how do we go back to normal? Well, something's going to happen. The sarcoplasmic reticulum is going to start to vacuum up the calcium it released. There is a protein called the sarcoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase that is going to break down ATP to get calcium out of the sarcoplasm and back into the SR. With this decline in calcium, troponin and tropomyosin revert to their normal state where the actin is being blocked. So myosin can no longer grab on. So it's like the myosin is letting go. And now, the connective tissue that got stretched is going to recoil, and that's going to get us back to normal, plus gravity will also get us back to normal. All right, on that note, we can now switch to a new topic, which is this concept called motor units. Let me tell you something first, though. The contraction of a muscle fiber is an all or none thing. So a single muscle cell can't contract at all. Sorry. A single muscle cell can't vary its contraction at all. A single muscle cell contracts all the way or it doesn't. And this leads to a dilemma. If each muscle cell is all or nothing, how come I can use my muscles to get various amounts of force? So... You can pick up something light, you can pick up something heavy. The key to how you can adjust this amount of force is this idea of motor units. A motor unit is a motor nerve and all of the muscle cells it's going to. So we're going to have three motor units in this diagram. There's like the red, the blue, and the purple motor unit. For the red one, we have the red motor neuron, and then we've got these reddish muscle fibers that it went to. So that is one motor unit. Then there's the blue one, which is the blue motor neuron, and those blue muscle fibers, and the purple one. 
So a motor unit is one motor neuron and all of its muscle fibers that it goes to. And this is the, the beautiful key here. If I want to generate just a tiny amount of force with the muscle, maybe I just use one motor unit. If I want to generate a little more force, now I'm going to use two motor units. If I want to generate even more force, I'm going to use three motor units. The more motor units I recruit and use, the more tension I am going to develop. All right, do me a favor. Stick your arm straight out off to the side. So it's just like straight in the air. And hold it there for the next minute. Your deltoid muscle might start to get a little tired. And what you're doing there is you're actually switching from motor unit to motor unit to motor unit so that like one motor unit is being used to hold the arm up, then you switch to another one, then you switch to another one, then you switch. And that way you can continue this action for longer. All right, I know what you're wondering. You're thinking, can we see a graph that shows this? And the answer is absolutely. So when here's my muscle fiber. Not my muscle fiber, sorry. Here's my muscle. My muscle. Each of these little circles is a muscle fiber. And as I proportionally excite more and more of them, I am going to generate more and more tension in that overall muscle. More tension in that muscle because I have more motor units excited. One of the early adaptations to weightlifting is you get better at using more motor units. One of the reasons why strength increases early on in weight training isn't because your muscles actually got any stronger. It's because you, your body, gets better at recruiting more motor units. All right. Motor units can actually be different sizes. So remember, a motor unit is a motor neuron and all the muscle fibers it goes to. So some motor units are big, meaning that there's lots of muscle fibers in it, like in the gluteus maximus, which we see here. Gluteus maximus is over here. That gluteus maximus has big motor units. Lots of muscle fibers per motor neuron. Now, the extraocular muscles, like the lateral rectus right here, they're going to have small motor units, which means fewer motor neurons per, sorry, fewer muscle fibers per motor neuron. Um, so what this does is it gives our eyeballs the ability to make small little movements. Smaller motor units gives us a greater dexterity, a greater precision in the movements we can make. Our eyeball muscles can make more fine movements because they have more, sorry, smaller motor units. Big muscles like the glutes, like the traps, like the lats tend to have bigger motor units. Okay, what else do we got? There's this thing called a muscle twitch. All right, this is everything that happens in a muscle fiber. From the time it starts its action potential, right there at time zero, you'll notice there's a little delay, and then there's a period of contraction where it's generating tension, and then a period of relaxation where tension drops. The little delay here, the latent period, is where all of that stuff that we had been talking about in the previous two lectures occurred. Generation of an action potential traveling of that action potential down to T-tubules, release of calcium, binding of calcium to troponin, shifting of troponin, shifting of tropomyosin, myosin grabbing onto actin. That all happens in that latent period. So this is called a muscle twitch. Stimulate, then three things happen. Latent period, period of contraction, period of relaxation. All right, next time, we'll look at some more twitches, and we'll continue this discussion of muscles. All right, see you guys later.